grab those pencils and let's get started. Next thing I want to do is just dab out a few of these pencil lines on the back here. But I'm going to take a Burns Ochre 10% from the Luminance range and just start to plot in a little bit of this pink that's coming through this hair at the back. Just a light coverage of that pink, just to start plotting it in. I want to go in with this Rose Carmine as well. Start to bring the the pencil down in the direction that this hair is coming down in. It doesn't have to be exact. I'm just looking for, you know, something that looks a little bit like the shapes that I can see on the reference photograph. And still light pressure, all the time light pressure. I'm just going to little circular motions in here because there's really not a lot of any sort of direction that I can see in here. Before we continue, I've just got time to mention that if you're looking for more tutorials this festive season, you might like to join me over on Patreon. You'll find over 140 hours of pet portrait and animal theme tutorials that you can work through and I add more every month. Okay, let's get back to Santa. I want to come in with the crimson as well. And the crimson is um, sort of where it's starting to get darker, where we're going down into the darker bits. So I'm going to keep it towards the bottom down here. a little bit in here as well. I'm going to come in with the cap at Morton Violet as well. Darken this down a little bit more. From there, what I want to do is I want to come in. I'm coming in with a cold grey too. And I'm going to start to bring a little bit of this grey over the bit. So these bits um, are going to be obviously the white, the white hair. So I want to start to shape these a little bit. So I'm just following them around. It really doesn't matter if they're not exact. You're not going to notice a difference when this is when this is finished. I'm just going to come up here. So I've started to put the cold grey on this um, on this hair, but I am just going to go under this hair with some. Payne's grey. I don't want to lose the edge of this hat. So I'm going to come up into into the underside of this hat to make sure that I've just got this distinction between hat and hair. Just a little bit. And then I'm going to start to come in with a warm grey for off the base of this hat. And I'm just looking for some shapes at the back as well. Just some shapes to just put a bit of interest into this hair. So this is the bit that's coming off his coat here. So 
and I'm going to bring that off his coat there. Actually, no, that's a bit of hair, isn't it, that's coming over. This is the bit that's coming off his coat. So this is his coat. Let's put that in. This bit is coming around. Bit of hair that's sort of sat on his collar. Let's put a bit of shape into that. Just looking for a bit of shape coming over here as well. I want to go from here and I want to come in with the warm grey one. So I'm going to bring this warm grey one into this area. Let it come all the way up to the edge of the, the face. And just blend these darker bits a bit that I've just put in with the darker grey. Just going to blend those. and smooth them out a little bit. I'm going to come into the back of here as well with the cold grey one. So I'm just tinting this area, just looking for just darker bits in here that are just going to add a bit of texture. but always sort of following around the direction that his hair's going in. Just darkening that down. So it all looks quite blocky at the minute, but as we refine it, we will start to make it look neater and more realistic and more natural. I want to come into this area down his beard. I'm going to work on this all in one go. And I want to come into this area with, I'm just going to use circular, circular strokes. I'm just going to take some of the lines out of that beard. And then I'm going to come in back in with these circular strokes with this warm grey one. And start to build up a little bit of colour. I'm going to come out from just under the nose with this moustache as well and bring that out, just using backwards and forwards strokes. And then back in with this nice even coverage. I'm just going to start to pull it down a little bit as it comes to the edge of this, this um, the edge of this beard here. His beard actually starts to come over his uh, coatless bit, but I'm just going to come down to here because the rest of it's going to be over his coat. So I'm just getting a nice, even, a fairly even coverage of warm grey one. Start to get a little bit of colour into this beard. What I want to do is to come, and I'm working on all of this at once now. I'll just be working on all of this at once. What I want to do is to come into this area where the pain's grey. So I'm going to come down the side of this face, sort of under the glasses a little bit here. Coming round in the direction that I can see. So I'm bringing it around that way a little bit. And then I want to make sure that I go up and under the hat. I want quite a, quite a good sort of shadow under this hat, really. It is quite dark under there. And then I'm just going to start to feather around and just put little bits of shape in here. Start to sort of feather down the, the some of the shapes in the hair and start to define these shapes a little bit. 
And just like with the hat, the trick is to keep this all nice and soft, really light, nice and soft, so that it stays quite sort of fluffy. I'm going to get a darker bit in here. I'm going to come a little bit of the Payne's grey in here, just a little bit. Bring a little bit of Payne's Grey into this. Works quite well, the Payne's Grey, on the, the grey side, but also on the pink because it puts that mix in. Obviously, this is a blue grey. The Payne's Grey is has got a blue tint to it. So putting it in with these pinks gives us a nice bit of purple. And you can see that there is a little bit of purple in this skin. And then works well on the grey as well. So I'm just going to use it at the back here to shape around this bit of hair that's coming over this way. We've got a bit that's coming over this way. And we've got some bits of detail. And I'm not looking to get it exact. I'm not looking to follow every little bit of uh, detail in here. I'm not looking to look for every little lock of hair or, you know, every line. Just building that up nice and slowly. This little bit at the back, I'm going to take my paintbrush, my clean dry paintbrush. And I want to blend it and just soften this out because it is quite muted at the back here. It's quite diffused, it's quite fuzzy. Colours aren't, you know, that bright, they're quite sort of grey. I just want to soften this down. And I can soften it into the pink a little bit. Use it to soften the pink as well. That's fine. So it's just brought that together a little bit. And then what I want to do is use the white Caran d'Ache and Just use that white to blend out some of this, this darker area. You can see it's, I don't know if you can see it, but it, it's still got a little bit of graininess to it. And so I want to use the white, almost like a bit of a blender pen or blender pencil, and just bring that down really gently, not pressing on hard just using it to blend out some of these bits that we've put in. So I'm going to take my kneadable eraser at the same time and I've just kneaded it into a pencil sort of shape and I'm just going to bring that and pick up a few highlights reshape it when it gets a little bit dirty. You want to keep a, the nice clean bit touching the paper. And then I'm just going to pick up a few little highlights with it. And then we'll come back in with this, with this white from the luminance and just bring some of this white through and just blend this area again. I'm going to come over this section with the salmon as well from the Polychromos range and just bring a little bit of that in just to brighten it and then in with the rose carmine. But any sort of pinks that you've got really, just go with whatever pinks you might have, that's fine. I'm going to come into this area as well with the, uh, with the warm grey 4 
and just tone that down and just push it back a little bit. Just make sure that I push this skin back underneath this white hair. The grey sort of on the darkest bits in the corners where, where the skin's sort of going down under the, under the hair. I'm just going back in with this warm grey five as well towards towards the back of the the head to just darken down little bits that need to be darker. So I'm just building it up just as I see bits of um, colour or darker bits and lighter bits. I'm just using the pencils to create those. And I'm just going to shape this bit of hair that's coming over this collar. Shape that around. I've just gone in with a little bit of Venetian red and now I'm going in with a little bit of the Payne's Grey again. Just a little bit. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the manual pen cutter again and I'm going to start to pull some extra. So we've got all these stray hairs and I'm going to pull some stray hairs over the top of this skin. Whether that's clusters or stray hairs, I'm just pull them over the top, shape it around all these stray bits over. And just sort of shape the, the curls a little bit or the waves with this, this manual pen cutter. And that means I can start to bring hair off in different directions and you know just make it a little, look a little bit more uh, natural. I will bring a little bit of this hat down onto this as well. And at the minute I'm, I'm using my manual pen cutter. I'm sort of holding it um, almost like a pen but not like a knife. I'm sort of holding it like a pen but I'm holding it and tipping it on its side and I'm actually using the back little bit if you can see the back little bit there I don't know if you can see that that little curve on the top of the uh, the pen cutter that's the bit that I'm using at the minute it's quite a, a wide sort of uh, part of the of the um, the blade and it creates a nice quite a wide sort of mark for me and that's what I want at the minute for this I use the manual pen cutter in, in several different sort of uh, positions at several different angles, um, depending on whether I want it sort of thicker or uh, a thicker or thinner line. And I'm just bringing this hat down. And then I'm going to just going to take my kneadable eraser again, pick up any crumbs of pigment that sat on here after we just used that. So I'm just picking those up, just cleaning up those marks. You can see I've picked up quite a bit of pigment. And then I'm going to go in with the Pablo White. And just make those look a little bit whiter and also sort of blend them a bit so that they don't just look like uh, lines that I've just put in with the the slice tool they just look a little bit more natural they look like they're part of the drawing a little bit more so 
I'm going to bring the, the white over there. So we've just started to put a little bit of this hair on the back of uh, Santa's head. And I've, I've done that quite quickly, I have to say, obviously, I'm quite conscious that you know, this is a tutorial and I don't want this to take hours and hours and hours. It's going to take long enough as it is because it's quite a big drawing. Um, but, you know, don't just because I'm moving on, don't feel that you have to move on. If you want to carry on working your area more then that's absolutely fine. Otherwise, I'm quite happy with this as this is now for, a you know, a tutorial that I want to be quite mindful of the the time that it's taking. I am just going to go back in with the Payne's Grey under, just make sure we've got a nice bit of shadow under these, this fur that I've just drawn in with the, the manual pen cutter. And that's how I always think of the pen cutter really. I just think of it as um, just a tool for drawing with. It's just like another pen. It just happens to um, uh, you know, you used to get those, um, I don't know, I don't even know what they're called. You get those sort of black uh, drawing boards. I remember having them uh, for Christmas when I was young. And um, I think you can still get them now, like scratch or something like that. That's what they were called. And they'd be sort of black and you'd get this sharp, almost look like a fountain pen type stylus thing. And you'd, um, you'd scratch your drawing in. I mean, that's pretty much how I think about this. I'm just sort of scratching the drawing in with the slice tool and it's quite a useful tool. I quite enjoy using it and I use it a lot. I would say I probably use it in just about every every drawing that I do actually. So okay so we just started to Make sure that we've got some shadow underneath that hat. Okay, so I've just made sure that I've, or I've just put some shadow in. Make sure that I've got shadow under this hat. And I'm just using the uh, the cold grey four now just to sort of tone down a little bit of this pink and just, just make it quite sort of subtle. I want to take a little bit of the cap at Mortem little bit of the cap at mortem here and I want to start to feather the his face off and into this moustache so I'm going to come in with a little bit of the cap at mortem I'm pressing on really lightly I'm letting the cap at mortem go up into his face and then I'm starting to bring it and feather it off his face so I'm just blending it into his face and then off and into this moustache in the direction that this moustache is going in. And I'll bring it, just bring it down here. I'm also gonna take it around the side of this face. Again, blending it into the face really lightly. Just sort of blend that down in the direction that this beard's coming in. So I'm sort of following the direction. So I've started to uh, blend that moustache. I want to then come in, this is a cold grey four, and I want to bring a little bit of the grey into this area as well. And I also, with a really light pressure, I want to use little circular strokes. Don't want to see the circles. I just want a nice up circular. I mean, I could, I could uh, use directional strokes. It wouldn't really matter. I, I would have to make sure that the directional strokes were sort of coming down in the bit, uh, the, the, in the direction that the beard was coming down in. But obviously, I can. I'm going to go to directional strokes just to show you. But if you prefer that. I can, can use directional strokes, but it just makes, I mean, I'll use some directional strokes on the edge here, actually. This is sort of coming over to his coat. This is the, the line between his beard and his coat. But down here in this, this little bit down here, doesn't really matter. I'm gonna just get a nice coverage 
over the top of that grey that we've put down. Really, really light pressure. And this is the easiest way and the simplest way that I can put a, a beard in. I'm obviously going to put his beard in. And this is just a nice, simple way to put this sort of really wiry uh, beard. I could obviously sit and draw it all out strand by strand, but you don't really want to, you don't really want to capture, try and capture all of the strands when putting a beard in like this, or it can look sort of, you know, overworked. What you want to do is, or what I want to do is to, I want to capture just almost like the, um, at the minute, I'm sort of trying to capture some of the colour that is on, on his skin. So the colour that's deep down under his beard. And then I would just want sort of an overall suggestion of the wiriness of the beard. I don't want this to become too sort of overworked and tight. It's going to look more natural. Obviously his focus, the whole of Santa's focus is going to be around his face. This beard, um, we don't want it, we want it to look very sort of fuzzy and diffused. I don't want it to look uh, really sort of tight and overworked. It's going to look a lot more natural because if you were to look at um, a beard really, unless you got really close to it, you just sort of see an overview of the beard with a few little strands that you could see sort of here and there and that's the same with hair or anything you know you just get an overview of it and then you would see a few uh, extra strands here and there and that's what I'm trying to achieve with this and I'll show you how I'm going to do that but at the minute I'm just looking for bits of colour some of these bits of colour that I'm putting in some of them will be coming in the direction of the beard and then others are just going to be a bit more sort of uh, you know, like I'll just use circular strokes. This bit down here, I'm actually going to come in with a little bit of the Delft Blue um, again. And because I've got a really sharp point on that, and I don't want uh, a sharp point there, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a scrap piece of paper and I'm just going to uh, almost sort of flatten my pencil and just create a little chisel tip. I don't know if you can see that, just a nice little uh, chisel tip, and that's going to give me a much better much better softer coverage that I want. I'm coming in with a little bit of the Delft Blue down here. A little bit of a direction there. And then I'm going to use a cold grey three and just tone that down a little bit. So it's just put a little bit of this Delft Blue, which is a really useful colour. I do use that quite a bit. great for sort of putting into you know uh, black fur where you can see um, just a bit of sort of like a purpley blue it's a really really nice color I use it a lot and that's one color that is on my uh, my pencil list I've got a suggested pencil list and that's a pencil list that I use uh, quite a lot. I use the, the pencils on there in just about every uh, portrait that I do, depending on obviously what colour animal I'm uh, working on. But if you want that suggested uh, list, it's just my, my uh, suggestions of pencils that work really well for me. So that if you're thinking of getting a set of pencils, you don't necessarily have to go and buy the full set of every brand. Um, you can go over to the website. I'll put a link in the uh, description. You can go over there and you can uh, print off. It's completely free. Just go print off the um, the list and it will just give you an idea as to the sort of colours that I use. Obviously, I do a lot of animals. So the colours that I find really useful for doing animals and that just means you can buy open stock then you can just go buy one pencil um, at a time, build up the collection and um, you don't have to go buy a whole set of everything. I'm just going to come in over this area with a warm grey one. 
and I'm just going to blend this out now with a warm grey one just to create a little bit more of a muted colour. Just tone it down a little bit, desaturate it a little bit. And I'm just going to blend this out as well. I'm just bringing the cold grey five just down here a little bit. It's a bit darker down here than I've made it. So I just want to bring the cold grey five around here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to think about bringing some stray hairs off the top of his head first. So I'm just going to bring a couple of stray hairs off the top of this, of this hair. Bring it around. And I'm just going to draw in, just like we've done, exactly the same sort of principle as we've done with the, the fur on the hat. I'm just going to start to draw in some of these extra sort of little white bits. If I want a thicker line, I'm sort of twisting my... Um, my slice tool and using the back again. So it, uh, if I have a thicker line, it's sort of a bit more like this. I'm twisting it and use the back. Then if I want a thinner line, so these that are sort of coming over the face, I'm sort of using the um, the side of the slice tool and sort of use it that way. So if I want the thicker line, I'll use the back of it, the round bit there. And if I want the thinner line, I'll turn it and I'll sort of use the side of it down that way so I'm sort of using the the really thin part and that way I can get some thicker or some thinner lines depending on uh, what I want so I'm just bringing this bringing this beard around I've got bits going everywhere but I'm just going to bring this over so we've got some uh, lovely bits that are coming over his face so I'm going to get a couple of those a couple of those hairs on his face in I'm going to bring a couple down onto this moustache I'm actually going to drag a few of these stray hairs out of this cap at Morton violet that we put in here to drag his moustache out and I am using the thin bit for that I am using the bit down the side because I want this to be quite nice I've just realized actually I've done that and I never put the darker bit in here too so let's just let's go back in with the cold gray four and let's put some bits into here so I'm just using this sort of directional stroke, this backwards and forward stroke, to bring that moustache over. I don't want to fill it in. I just want to bring it, bring it over. So we've just started to shape that moustache a little bit. And I'm going to blend that with a cold grey three. Let's just add a couple of extra little bits. Okay, now I can bring some. of the slice tool around to add some stray bits in. And I'm just going to add a few extra hairs because he's got a few extra little hairs that are coming onto his face. Bring a couple over like that. And then I'm going to start, so I'm just looking for sort of sections of hair in the direction that are going in. So I can see there's, you know, a few curls around here. I can see that he's got some bits that come off the bottom of his hair there and I'm really not you know I'm not paying too much attention to it I don't 
need it to be exactly as in the um, the reference photograph I just want it to look like a beard I don't want it to be too uniform I don't uh, any better the best thing to do is just not think about it and just sort of go for it really otherwise it starts to get very uh uniform and you know you start to get lots of parallel lines and we don't want that we just want it all to be uh, really quite sort of wiry quite loose quite random and the only real sort of thing to remember is that it's all got to come over this way so as we're you know we might have little bits that are stray here and there but it's all going to come over this way some lines will be thicker some lines will be thinner but it's all sort of coming over so i suppose i'm keeping it you know, quite curvy i'm keeping all the lines quite curvy but i'm just changing the angle of the lines and changing the angle of the curves that is um, the best way for me to keep it random really it's sort of coming over but then curves around this way a little bit so I'm bringing it over and then bringing it around this way a little bit and I can go over the lines you know as many times as I want just just until I'm happy that I've got a nice bit of texture in here this isn't the end this isn't the top layer this is just putting in some bits of texture and obviously we've got some nice bits coming over the face okay so i'm going to leave the slice tool there for the minute i may come back in it isn't a sort of one chance only to use the slice tool i can go in and i can put the slice tool again and, and build up different layers but i want to start to sort of pick up on some of this texture uh, now now i don't know if you're aware when you use the slice tool on the pastel mat so if i get my uh, scrap piece of pastel mat again if I was to, so this is obviously just raw pastel mat at the minute. If I was to pull the path, um, so if I was to pull the slice tool through that, you can't see anything at the minute, but the slice tool on pastel mat creates a nice sort of channel that resists. So it doesn't damage, it's not damaging the paper at all, but it's creating a, a channel that's resisting and you can see those marks in there now so what we've done by using the slice tool in here is we've created all these lovely little channels now that are going to resist as I put more sort of depth into here to build up the texture it's going to resist and we're going to create these wiry bits and we're going to make these wiry bits a bit more pronounced I'm going to take a cold grey three and I'm going to come around the back of this or this side of this uh, beard where it meets this coat and I'm going to start to pull a little bit of this grey through come round here as well and just darken that down a little bit I don't want to press on hard because if I do then obviously I will push the pencil down into these channels that we've just put in but I don't want to I want to sort of resist them so I'm just using this cold grey three and I'm just dusting it really over the top this beard to try and capture a bit more depth into this into this area I'm going to I'm going to come around the edge on the end of this or around the edge of this beard here and on the edge I'm just going to flick it out a little bit I'm just going to create some extra little wispy bits on the end 
just to soften that. Soften that area. And then I'm just going to go back to little circular strokes. I'm just going to pick up any crumbs on the end. Keep that nice and neat. I'm going to come into areas here with a bit of the Venetian red. Just a little bit. And it's just representing where the um, the beard might be a little bit thinner and you know you can see the skin underneath that's all I want to pull a bit of the Payne's grey through this moustache so I'm just going to just add a tiny bit of texture of this uh, Payne's grey and also, I'm going to start to use smaller little directional strokes now to put some of this uh, Payne's Grey into uh, this beard. So whereas before I was using circular strokes, now I'm keeping these strokes slightly more uh, defined. looking for little darker areas. I'm also going to go in with a warm grey for and again just pick up a little tiny just almost like little dashes. Pick up these little bits just sort of coming over in the direction uh, in the direction that this beard's coming in. And then at the minute, this is looking a little bit grainy. So I'm going to take my Pablo again. I'm going to come over these channels. I've got a nice sharp pencil for this, actually. And I'm going to come over these little channels that I've just made. Take the... Uh, and take this little moustache up a bit further. And the Pablo will go uh, just directly over the over the pencil I've put down as well. So I can create some extra little bits with just the Pablo pencil. I don't need to use the slice tool. So I can do a bit of both. I think the slice tool looks nice because it makes areas look quite nice and crisp. But the uh, just using the pencil can work as well. And you can just add as much as you want. Obviously, he's got beard that comes up into his uh, face. And just take this pencil through this area and then start to... Start to just add a little bit of the white into, into this beard. And I'm just using this Pablo to sort of blend areas, smooth areas, make areas a little bit brighter. Just tone down some of these darker bits that we've put in here as well. And then what I want to do is take a, a warm grey six. And with really light pressure, just bring in some of these 
Um, there's some quite sort of dark hairs in here. Uh, quite sort of wavy, crinkly. Just bringing those in to make it look like he has got this. It's quite wiry beard. I'm just putting little little bits of texture into this dark bit down here. It's almost like creating little scribbles over the page. Really lightly, really, really lightly. But they're just like extra wiry bits. Uh, so you don't want to think about it. I don't want to really think about it too much. I just want to um, let the pencil sort of dance around. I am going to think about it a little bit more when I get onto the face because they're going to be more noticeable. So I am giving it a sort of a, you know, a bit more attention as I get onto the face because he has got some dark bits, sort of dark stray hairs. But when I get down onto this bit, I just want to, he hasn't got many in there, but he has got some. So I've just put a little bit of texture into that beard. And then, like I say, it could be that I just go back over, you know, you can do the um, the slice tool however many times you want if you feel that you want to bring a little bit more texture in if you feel you haven't got enough texture then you can just go back over it I've been over this area quite a bit now so um, I wouldn't want to go back over it too many more times with the slice tool because I've put quite a lot in here already, but I could certainly go back over it again if I you know, wanted to, to build up. You can see that I can just add a little bit more in different directions, if that's what I want to do, if you know, need a little bit more texture. But, in, but I think I'm gonna leave that uh, for the minute. I'm gonna leave that like that, I'm just gonna Pull a couple more bits to his moustache over at different angles. But that's that. I'm going to leave that, leave that like that. So that's his, uh, or at least his top part of the beard for the minute. And the only other thing that I'm just going to do to finish this area for the minute is to use the ash grey from the Pablo and just bring a little bit of this sort of warm grey colour into this hair at the back, just a little bit. Just dragging a little bit of that through. And if you didn't have that, you could just use the uh, the warm grey too from the Polychromias if you had that one. But just add a little bit of warmth into into this beard and into that hair. Like I say, you can carry on if you feel that you need to carry on a little bit more. I'm gonna leave that uh, for the minute. I might just sort of uh, add a little bit more as I come down, because the beard actually comes over here. So I've still got more of that beard to put in, but I'm just gonna leave that uh, there for the minute. Okay, and I'm gonna move on to the fur that's coming around here. So let's move on to that fur. Okay, so I think that's a good place to leave this tutorial for now. I'll be back in the next video. But until then, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.